Good day, everyone. You're very welcome to our Mass today on this, the fifth Sunday of Easter. In today's readings, we hear, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. That's a reminder to us that without God in our lives, we are restricting ourselves and our full potential. With God in our lives, we can achieve things that we cannot even imagine. So today we are called to remember that, to remember that if we remain in Jesus, that he will give us all that we need. So we begin now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our failings, and let us ask the Lord's forgiveness, which the Lord is always ready to do. But before we do that, we'll just remember the intentions for this Mass. We remember Michael and Kathleen Coyle, whose anniversaries are at this time, also Margaret and Patrick Murphy, and their son Shami, later of Rathori, whose anniversaries are also at this time, and also Patrick and Mary Marin, and their daughters Maud and Bridget, and deceased members, whose anniversaries are at this time, and also remember the anniversary of Priscilla Clark. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul got to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They could not believe he was really a disciple. Barnabas, however, took charge of him, introduced him to the apostles, and explained how the Lord had appeared to Saul and spoken to him on his journey, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Saul now started to go around with them in Jerusalem, preaching fearlessly in the name of the Lord. But after he had spoken to the Hellenists and argued with them, they became determined to kill him. When the brothers knew, they took him to Caesarea and sent him off from there to Tarsus. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up, living in the fear of the Lord, and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. 
This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the response, You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live forever and ever. Response, you, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. Response, you, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. And my soul shall live for him, my children serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come, declare his faithfulness to people yet unborn. These things the Lord has done. Response, you, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, our love is not to be just words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are the children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence, whatever acquisitions it may raise against us, because God is greater than our conscience and he knows everything. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence and whatever we ask him, we shall receive because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he has told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. Whoever remains in me bears fruit in plenty. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I have spoken to you. Make your home in me, as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me with me in him bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away, he withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire, and they are burnt. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will, and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. In our readings today, God reminds us of his transforming love for us in Jesus Christ. We learn that Christ is the true vine and we are the branches. As branches crafted on the true vine, we are expected to bear positive and good fruits in Christ. St. Paul's conversion reminds us that we can never predict 
when and where God will manifest his presence in our lives. Immediately after Paul's dramatic conversion, his life changed completely. Indeed, so fearsome was Paul's reputation that when he came to Jerusalem, the disciples were afraid to meet him because of his past actions. And yet, despite all this, we know that Paul went on to do powerful deeds for God and for his church. He truly bore much fruit, and he could do so because he remained in Christ and in the Spirit. He was transformed from Saul, the persecutor, to Paul, the preacher of the good news. Likewise, if we are attached to Jesus, the true vine, then our faith will be nourished and he will transform and empower each one of us. In our second reading, John reminds us that our love is not just to be mere words or mere talk, but something real and active. The center of the church is Jesus Christ. Our unity with Jesus is a central bond of the church. He is the vine, we are the branches. Only through following Jesus can we be certain that we are the children of truth and our actions should reflect this. The Word of God transforms us because it is real and active. So we cannot love God or keep his commandments without concrete works of charity and mercy. Also, we cannot remain in Christ without bearing good fruits as a sign of our union with him. John reminds us that whoever keeps his commandments lives in God and God lives in him. This simply means first that the only way we can bear fruit or such fruit is by taking God's commandments seriously. And secondly, what proves that we are really in Christ is our ability to keep his commandments. It is also public confirmation of our love for Christ and for those around us. Today's gospel is a call to strengthen our relationship with Christ in order to continue to live in him. The type of relationship that should exist between us and Christ is illustrated by the relationship between a vine and its branches. Therefore, it is worth reflecting on what the vine branch image might mean. This is best understood when we consider what branches need to achieve their purpose. That purpose is bearing fruit and to achieve it, branches depend upon vines and vine dressers. Each of these, the vines and the vine dressers, contribute to the production of fruit in different ways. The vine makes the branches live. The vine dressers pruning encourages their growth, and each part of this image points to some key truth about God or ourselves. In the biblical sense, Christ is the vine. The branches represent Christ's disciples. God the Father is the vine dresser, the one who looks after the vine, and the fruit the branches bear are the good works that Christians do. And essentially what the message is telling us is that if Christ's disciples are to bear any fruit, they need to be dependent on Christ and to be pruned by the Father through the Word and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel, Jesus teaches his disciples that his relationship with them will not end after his death. He will remain with them always. 
This unity between Jesus and his disciples provides the motivation and the reason for them to continue to do the work that he began. Similarly, Jesus' presence with us through the gift of the Holy Spirit enables us to continue his mission of love and reconciliation. Jesus also teaches his disciples about the importance of the words he has taught to them. Just as Jesus will remain in his disciples, so too will his words. We come to know Jesus through the scriptures, the living word of God. Our commitment is to be Christ's disciples and that is sustained through God's word. This commitment is also strengthened by our life of prayer and nourished by the Eucharist. Through the Eucharist, Jesus dwells in us, remains with us, and transforms us so that we might bear fruit in his name. And that's one of the major problems with not coming to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, not being able to come into the churches to receive him. Because although we hear him in his word, and his word speaks to us, we are not receiving him in his flesh and blood. We are not receiving that spiritual nourishment. That's why we, it's so important that we receive him in the Eucharist. And it is the Eucharist that is indeed the food for the soul. That's how we become transformed into his divinity, by receiving his divinity in the Eucharist. Today, we can ask our risen Lord to open our hearts and minds more completely to his word, the word of God. We can ask the Holy Spirit to illumine our hearts and our minds so that we can see the truth and have the courage to live it in our lives. And now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus teaches us that we depend on the love of God and one another. With courage and faith, let us present our needs to the Father. For all the baptized, that they may never be separated from Christ the true vine. Lord, hear us that world leaders may cooperate with one another in an effort to seek peace and prosperity for all. Lord, hear us. That bishops and priests may never fail to proclaim the gospel even in the face of adversity or trial. Lord, hear us. That those preparing for baptism and confirmation this year may develop a personal relationship with Jesus, their Saviour. Lord, hear us. That our love may express itself in concrete actions of visiting the sick, 
feeding the hungry and protecting the unborn. Lord, hear us. For all who are sick in body and soul, that God may bring them comfort and healing. Lord, hear us. And for all whose pilgrimage on earth is over, and we remember especially today Michael and Kathleen Coyle, Margaret and Patrick Murphy and their son Shamie, late of Rathori, and Patrick and Mary Maron and daughters Maud and Bridget and deceased family members. Also, we remember Priscilla Clark. We pray that they may reach their final destination at the Father's house. Lord, hear us. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may they rest in peace. And may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Heavenly Father, the vine grower, we ask that your Spirit may work in and through us, so that we may bear much fruit for your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And now just to mention the upcoming feast days, Monday the 3rd of May is the feast of Saints Philip and James the Apostles. Tuesday the 4th of May, the feast of St. Conlus, a bishop. And Wednesday the 5th, the feast of Blessed Edmund Rice, religious, founder of the Christian Brothers. And Saturday the 8th of May, the feast of Blessed John Sullivan, who was a priest. And just to mention in the bulletin that there is a global, the Pope, or sorry, Pope Francis has asked us to, or has called for, a global daily rosary to end the pandemic. This is a daily rosary during the month of May. And it will be uh, on Facebook, uh, there's a, if you look on our parish uh, Facebook page, there's a link there that you can click on, and that will take you to where that rosary has been said each day. Each day it will be from a different Marian shrine. Um, I think about the 10th of May, it comes from the shrine in Nock, but it comes from Fatima, Lourdes, all various Marian shrines around the world. So it's, in a sense, a global tour each day to a new part of the world where Mary has appeared. And the aim of this rosary is to join in with people all around the world in praying for an end to this pandemic. We must remember that Our Lady has great intercessory powers and she has always worked miracles when, when they seemed impossible. And this is a very wonderful opportunity to participate in that global uh, response to this pandemic, this global daily rosary to end it. So I'd encourage you to click on the link now. It's uh, at 5 p.m. Irish time on the day, the, each day, 5 p.m. Irish time, and you can click in on that link. I remember when I was in Rome, uh, there's a shrine there to Our Lady, our, our Divino Amore, Our Lady of Divine Love. And there was a, the story is told that this icon was on the outskirts of Rome, on the Via, Via Aureli, I think it was, from memory. And in centuries past, a traveller was passing this archway going into Rome, he had actually taken a wrong turn, and wild dogs attacked him. And as they attacked him, he looked up at the image of Our Lady and the icon, and he pleaded with her to save his life. And she did. And that uh, then became a place of pilgrimage. And he moved that icon then to 
this little church up on a hill in Divina Mori, out about half an hour out from Rome. And that image was brought in during the war. When Hitler, when the Germans were about to uh, march into Rome and destroy Rome, uh, Pope Pius XII, I think it was, brought the, had that image brought into Rome and the people assembled round that image of Our Lady and prayed for the, that Rome would be saved. And the history books record that for some unknown reason, as the German troops were outside the city of Rome, they suddenly turned and retreated. Even Churchill, I believe, mentioned it in his diary about the miraculous event that had taken place that the Germans had suddenly, when they had Rome at their ready for the taking just, suddenly they turned. And that was due to the intercession and the power of Our Lady. So if Our Lady can work that sort of miracle, she can work any miracle because she is so favoured by God. She's the mother of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ. So I'd encourage you to please join in that global rosary with all the peoples around the world that will be involved in it. Also, just to mention that, sadly, consummation and First Holy Communion will not take place as we had arranged during the months of May or June We've been told this by the government that no uh, consummation or Holy Communion ceremonies are to take place during those two months. So it's very disappointing news for everyone concerned. But be assured that as soon as we have further clarification from the government, we will immediately act to set new dates and to get those ceremonies done as soon as possible. It's rather unfortunate that we've had a couple of postponements now. Uh, we are hoping to get them done during May and confirmation probably at the beginning of June, but that's not now going to take place. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by our worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to lie to you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as the acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Michael and Kathleen Coyle, Margaret and Patrick Murphy and their son, Shamey, Patrick and Mary Marin and their daughters, Maud and Bridget, and deceased family members, and Priscilla Clark, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. 
And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. And for those who cannot receive communion today, we say the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. 
since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Behold, O good and most sweet Jesus, I cast myself upon my knees in your sight. And with the most fervent desire of my soul, I pray and beseech you to impress upon my heart lively sentiments of faith, hope, and charity, whilst with deep repentance and grief of soul, I ponder within myself and mentally contemplate thy five most precious wounds. Having before my eyes that which the prophet David put in my mouth concerning thee, O good Jesus, they have pierced my hands and my feet, they have numbered all my bones. And speaking of Our Lady, this is, of course, coming into the month of May. And May is traditionally devoted to the rosary, so that's why I suppose Pope Francis had that, was inspired to start that rosary to end the pandemic during the month of May. So we remember to pray to Our Lady for protection. So we pray to her now, remember O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your clemency, hear and answer us. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.